Connor, welcome to the Aston Villa photo booth. Cheers. A series of your best pictures from across the season. It's been some season for you. We'll start at the very beginning of mm -hmm. pre-season. First one under Brucey. Yeah. How mentally and physically challenging was it? Yeah, it was a tough pre-season. The kind of the unknown, I suppose, of a of a new manager, a new pre-season. Obviously, with myself joining in January, I wasn't sure kind of how, how it was going to go physically, mentally. I felt I acquitted myself quite well. Um, it was a really enjoyable one as well at the same time. And it's, it, was, uh, no, it, was, it was a good one, a testing one, but it, it, it kind of gave me that base and that kind of that confidence to, to go into the season with and uh, to start off on the, on the right foot. What were your thoughts every training session? How did you approach it? You've had a big season. Mm -hmm. Do you set yourself targets at this point? Um, well, I suppose at the time, from January to the end of the season, I was probably in and out a little bit, finding my feet. And I really wanted to, to make the most of the season and um, you know to hit the ground running. So I went into it just you know making the most of every training session, getting as much fitness as possible. Target-wise, I always like to get into double figures for, for a midfielder. It's something that I, I've always done. Um, scoring goals, um, it's a big plus point in my, in my game. So um, you know it was it was going to be a testing season to see if you know if I could uh, establish myself and get the double figures. But I have to be satisfied that um, you know that I have done it. So goals big part of your game. This was your first. Yeah. Didn't come in the best of circumstances, uh -huh. of course, but it made you win your place back, really. It had been a not maybe a third or fourth game, maybe. Um, I think it was my first start. Um, you know, so I felt like I had to kind of make a little bit of a difference or a name for myself, I suppose. Um, you know, it wasn't a great game for us personally. The goal probably stood out in the gaffer's head, maybe, to, to keep me in, because it was something that we probably weren't doing at the start of the season. Um, it was nice to get off the mark early um, and actually had the chance and after I scored, I think I scored that late on and I had a free kick just outside the box and I thought, why don't you put this in the top corner and make it 2-2, but it, it hit the, the top of the wall. But um, no, pleasing to get my first one off um, early. Um, personally, obviously that was nice, but obviously disappointing result. Yeah, just a few days later, of course, mm. Norwich at home. Hat-trick for yourself, a great day. Yeah, it was fantastic, you know, my first professional hat-trick. The goal at Reading, like you said, probably gave me that platform to, to kick on a little bit. Like I said, yeah, it was, it was a great day. My famous favourite performance of the season, obviously. Um, speaks for itself, first hat-trick, three goals. Um, no, it was a good day. And how nice to be able to take the match ball home. Yeah, great. Um, got everyone to sign it. Um, you know, still have it at the, in the living room at home. So hopefully it won't be my first one and my last one in my career. So this one just a couple of weeks later, yeah. Nottingham Forest. Pressured situation, yeah. one all at the time. What are your thoughts as you step up to take this? I don't know. I just there was a there was a big gap on that side of the wall where I ended up hitting it, um, and I really fancy getting it around there. Um, the, the keeper probably, looking back now, probably set up his wall wrong. I would say there was that much of a, a gap, and um, you don't really see that usually. Um, and when I saw, it, I thought, yeah, this is me. Fancy myself, and uh, lucky enough, it went in, and it so happened to be the winning goal as well. You enjoyed the celebration down in the corner flag. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Um, that was five after maybe ten or so games, so that was really pleasing as well. Um, but uh, yeah, especially when it was the winner, it makes that add a little bit more special. We'll jump forward a few months. We're going to spend a bit of time talking about yeah. this one. Where does this day, this this picture, this moment rank in your whole career? Um, yeah, it's right up there for kind of a special moment, one that will probably be talked about for every time the kind of Burnley and Villa game comes up for a while, for it to kind of seal the game for us. The atmosphere that came with it, the three points, obviously the win over over Birmingham. Yeah, it was right up there with you know probably one my favourite goal I've scored. On top of you know when I played for Ireland, the the playoff final that I won with Barnsley, um, just as a moment, it was it was up there. Yeah. What does that mean to you to be in second city derby folklore now for the rest of your life? Yeah, a, a great deal. You know, um, I work hard for the moments. Um, you know, you work tirelessly for hours and hours and hours and. You know, you can get a special moment any second, and uh, to get a special moment like that, I just put it down to hard work, and um, you know, it's, uh, it's it's really pleasing. And the goal itself, I mean, talk to us about how it came about. Was it in your mind from the second you saw it? To be honest with you, I probably wasn't having my best of games. Um, it was a little bit of a scrappy affair, um, and we were one nil up. It was getting a little bit tense, and for whatever reason, it just fell to me, and, and I just had that thought, just just go for it. And um, as soon as I hit it, I knew I had a chance. Um, it's one of the moments when you when you strike a ball, you just know that it, you've hit it sweetly. Um, and when you look up and it kind of dips over the keeper in front of the whole ten was it's pretty amazing, yeah. 
How surreal was it? You celebration, you start running towards the coaches, then back yeah, to the hotel. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really know what to do. I kind of got lost in the moment, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I started running around in a circle and then went towards the whole tent. Um, because obviously that's the, the traditional ends um, on Derby Day. So, uh, yeah, I kind of just turned around and faced and put my hands in the air. And um, yeah, it was a special picture to kind of to look back on. I want to talk about the fans. Uh, this is a bit earlier in the season away at QPR, yeah. but um, away days, mm -hmm. particularly when they're successful, yeah. what they like as players. Yeah, fantastic. Um, QPR was a big one for us. We were 1 0 down at the time, came back on 1 2 1. That springs into mind. Barnsley away springs into mind. Sporting away, even though we had, it's not a, the biggest of ground, so our attendance wouldn't have been as big. Sheffield Wednesday away, you know, big away following. Um, it's probably that extra little bit special when we went away from home because um, there's so many travel um, in the numbers every week. Um, and, you know, to, to give them a, a kind of a, a satisfying journey home is, is, is always nice. So now that Aston Villa central midfielder scored 10 goals in a season since yeah. David Platt in 1991. Yeah. This first though, away at Sunderland, yeah. the moment you thought you had it. Yeah, I probably knew in my head that it wasn't my goal, but I just thought if I celebrate it, they might give it to me and it might get me over the line. Um, the longer it stayed in my head um, that I was on nine, would have probably got a little bit frustrating for myself. Um, so when I came back into the dressing room and saw that this hadn't been given to me, I was a little bit frustrated. But I probably knew in my in my heart that it, you know it wasn't my goal and I wanted to do it properly. But um, you know, still a good performance and result all the same. So that was pleasing. You got it in the end. Yeah. At home to Reading. Yeah. Seeing in your celebration there. Yeah. What do these kind of stats mean to you? For, for a midfielder, I suppose, it's, it's not very often anymore that someone gets into double figures. Um, I work tirelessly on, on, score, on trying to score goals. Um, you know, every player brings something different to the, to the team. And for me, I like to bring goals to the team. That's my kind of strength that I like bringing. Um, and to reach 10 and double figures was, was a, a game for, aim for myself and it's pleasing. And when you think of some of the central midfielders that have played here yeah. in nearly 20 years since, mm -hmm. since that record, it's a real feat. For me to be where I am now, is, it's been down to hard work to come through the leagues, League 2, League 1 Championship, to be at Aston Villa, you know, and it's it's hopefully the start of a, of a pleasing, you know, next five or six years here. I love playing here, I love scoring goals here, and uh, to, to reach a, a good accolade, to kind of, you know, showcase myself as pleasing.